up to this point, all the thermodynamic transformations that we've considered have been quasi-static and reversible. And therefore, let's talk about one that for once is not reversible, and that's the free expansion. Free expansion is an irreversible transformation, and that comes from the fact that it's not even a quasi-static transformation to begin with, because during this expansion, the gas is not in equilibrium. It's a rapid, uncontrolled expansion as we open the valve between the two containers here and let the ideal gas that's in the left container flow into the container on the right, which is empty, and then we leave the valve open so that eventually it reaches equilibrium. But that expansion is rapid and uncontrolled, and we cannot claim that it is a sequence of equilibria. That's not true. So if the transformation is not quasi-static, it cannot be reversible. So we now have an example of an irreversible transformation. And in particular, this transformation is interesting because it's going to help us understand how we know that the internal energy of an ideal gas is only a function of its temperature. So let's talk about what happens during the expansion. If we open the valve and let the gas flow into the container on the right and reach equilibrium, we have two containers here that have rigid walls and insulated walls. Now, rigid walls means that the work done by the gas is zero, and insulated walls means that there's no heat transfer. Heat can't come in from the surroundings, and it can't leave the gas to the surroundings because the walls of the containers are insulated. Now, something weird here, though. I thought that when a gas expands, it does positive work. So how can the work done by the gas be zero here? And that's a fair question. Turns out what we should be saying is that when a gas expands and has a mechanical effect on its surroundings and it deforms its surroundings, perhaps it pushes a piston in a cylinder, then yeah, it does positive work. It actually transfers energy to the piston. However, if we have containers with rigid walls and we let the gas just expand within the container, the walls are rigid, so the gas cannot impart any energy to these walls and deform them in any way. Therefore, there's actually no work being done by the gas. So there is a condition when we say that when a gas expands, it does positive work. It's because typically we assume that it's trapped in a cylinder with a piston, and by expanding, it moves the piston. And so that's the work in question. But if you have rigid walls, no work, and no heat because the walls are also insulated. Now, worth noting that experimentally, we notice that the temperature stays constant. So the temperature of the gas remains constant. That's an important observation. Because if we now take a look at what changes, pressure changes? Yes, pressure changes. Does volume change? Yes, for sure volume changes. T Temperature, no change. So the only state variable that does not change is temperature. OK, fair enough. In addition, if we look at the first law, which says that delta E internal is equal to Q on minus work by, well, then we're going to find 0. There's no heat transfer. There's no work being done. So that's zero. So E internal, the internal energy, does not change. And the only reason it doesn't change is because temperature doesn't change, and because temperature is the only thing that doesn't change. Pressure and volume change. So E internal staying constant is actually linked to temperature staying constant. And that's how we conclude that E internal
is solely a function of temperature for an ideal gas. can be a function of pressure, pressure changed, and E internal dimming. Same thing for volume. And therefore we conclude, the important conclusion that we've already stated, that E internal is only a function of temperature in the case of an ideal gas. So this is an important um, experiment, if anything, just for this result. It turns out it's also important when we talk about the second law of thermodynamics, and we will revisit it then. But for now, let's just conclude by saying that the internal energy, just as a reminder, for a monatomic ideal gas is equal to 3 halves of nRT, or if you prefer, you can also write it as 3 halves of capital N KBT, both forms are equivalent depends if you want to think in terms of number of moles or actually number of particles. And then E internal is equal to 5 halves of nRT. Or if you prefer, 5 halves of N kBT. We should specify that this is for a monatomic gas, and this is for a diatomic gas. And we are going to assume that when we say diatomic, we mean rigid diatomic. We neglect the vibrational degree of freedom, unless told otherwise. So diatomic is equivalent to saying rigid diatomic. And so the internal energy is only a function of temperature, and depending on the type of gas, you have the corresponding formulas to give you the expression of the internal energy of a monatomic or a diatomic gas. Of course, from there, you can also find delta E. Delta E internal, in the case of a monatomic ideal gas, would be 3 halves nR delta T. Thanks for watching this video. We created Cogverse Academy to help you save time by focusing on what matters most when studying for exams. If you'd like to learn how Cogverse Academy can personally help you improve your grades, check us out at cogverseacademy.com and send us an email if you have any questions. We'd love to help you.